Assalamu alaikum. A welcome to the Blair House, our magnificent and historic host this year. And Eid Mubarak to everyone. This is such a beautiful audience, and it's so moving, and it's so powerful to see people here from so many different backgrounds. Just a few weeks ago, we were in the midst of fasting uh, in Ramadan, and here we are, uh, blessed to celebrate Eid together. And I have to say, is it just me, or does it feel to you all, too, that Ramadan just keeps going faster and faster? <laughs> so one feature of, of Ramadan here in the United States is that we largely stick to our schedules, our work schedules, our school schedules. So it's a month that we expect to be very tiring. Uh, and in some ways it is. But it's also so uplifting, and it's so energizing. And it's an incredible thing that we actually nourish ourselves. We nourish our souls by fasting. And we break fast together with people from all walks of life, tasting the diversity and sampling the hospitality of so many cultures from all around the world. And that's why we long for this month, and we try to relish it as much as possible. As Ramadan is on the lunar calendar, it moves back about 10 days every year, and this year, March Madness actually <laughs> fell during Ramadan. So the most outstanding player, the awardee for the tournament, was Adana Sanogu. Uh, Adama came to the United States from Mali at the age of 15, and along with two of his teammates, Adama was actually fasting during tournament games. His story, like the stories of so many of you, are incredible. It's an honor to be here with this phenomenal group of change makers. The diversity and experience that's in this room represents what our country looks like and represents the best of our ideals. We come together from so many backgrounds because of our common belief that we can make an impact in our country and all over the world. And that includes our effort to combat Islamophobia, to combat anti-Semitism, and other forms of hatred and bigotry. As President Biden said last week, we're determined to confront all forms of hate, including Islamophobia. This is a priority for my administration, which is why I established an interagency task force to address attacks on Muslims and anti-Muslim bias and discrimination. And that was a... <laughs> and he continued, this was a focus of the United We Stand Summit we convened last September. Standing up against anti-Muslim hate is essential to who we are as a country founded on freedom and justice for all. The present statement echoes the principle of equality taught in so many faiths. In his last sermon, the prophet, peace be upon him, emphasized, all mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. And a white has no superiority over a black, nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by piety and good action. This year, we witnessed the convergence of Ramadan and Passover and Easter. During this time, I had the opportunity to be in Jerusalem and to visit Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and the Western Wall. As I, as I travel as a member of this administration, the most diverse administration that's ever been assembled, I am proud to represent a country that is comprised of people from every corner of the planet. And we are determined to advocate for the freedom of all people. And I'm proud to stand with a Secretary of State that is so sincerely committed to human rights. Tonight, we are really here to celebrate all of you and all the powerful ways in which you're engaging and ways that you're working in the trenches on challenging issues during what is undoubtedly a challenging time. There is no way that we can do all this work without you. So thank you so much. I am hopeful. I'm hopeful about our future, particularly because of all the young people that are here tonight. 
And I want to introduce Ms. Alia Saliban, who is a student activist who has made a profound impact uh, at, the, at Howard University uh, and in Washington, D.C. more broadly. She'll be attending uh, Northeastern University uh, to study public health next year. Please welcome me in joining Alia. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We translate to peace be upon you. My name is Alia Saliban. I'm a sen graduating senior. <laughs> graduating senior, biology major, double minors in chemistry and community development from Boston, Massachusetts, by way of Somalia. I serve as the current Muslim Student Association president at the illustrious Howard University. This amazing place called Howard University has allowed me to grow and develop in so many ways. I want to thank Dr. Bernard Richardson, Dean of Chapel, for the opportunity to develop my leadership skills and strengthen my faith. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the State Department for hosting such a wonderful Eid Gala. Coming to America seven years ago, I would have never imagined that the journey would lead me to this day, but I would never want it any other way. Even, when, even before I was born, my mother made a decision that made sure that I had a path of greatness. My family is from Somalia, which currently is going through a civil war. When my mother arrived at the refugee camp named Kakuma in Kenya, she was faced with the dilemma of having to choose one of her daughters to have a better future, and that was me. I was chosen and sent to Sweden to live with a distant relative until I immigrated to America seven years ago. Living in different parts of the world helped me lay the foundation of what I wanted to do in life. I knew that my calling was to serve my community. From this point on, my goal became to overcome adversity, obtain a college degree, loan free, thank God, <laughs> and become a health professional. The path toward these goals is heavily influenced in my intersectionalities, which are being a visibly Muslim woman, immigrant, first-generation college student, and a Somali woman. Despite the many hurdles the communities I'm part of have faced, the one area I knew I could create a tangible change was the health sector. This is where my desire to become a physician with a global health background comes in. I hope to one day return to Kakuma and provide essential health services. As a physician, I aim to serve as an example for others that humble beings can lead to great things. My aspiration to help others and my curiosity in solving complex problems pushes me to be the best of the best that I can be. As I look forward to graduation, I'm excited to announce that I'll be attending Northeastern's one-year accelerated program where I'll be pursuing my master's in public health. My overall aspiration is to return to Somalia to challenge the stigmas of mental health and women's health by creating a pragmatic solution that focuses on the health infrastructure of my country. In creating and building health infrastructures, it is imperative to include marginalized communities at the table from start to finish. Marginalized communities differ in each nation, which means the table must change to address what they need. Living in such a privileged and globally influential country like America, it is our duty to assist nations in their struggles, whether that's independence, democracy, and freedom. In the great words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., injustice everywhere is the threat, justice. Your generosity and hospitality have made this event truly special and unforgettable. I appreciate the effort and resources put into making this celebration a success and bringing the Muslim community together. Thank you for recognizing and respecting our cultural traditions and for creating an inclusive and welcoming environment. I'm truly grateful for this opportunity to celebrate Eid with our friends and neighbors. Thank you so much, and I would say Jazakallah Khair. Thank you so much, Alia. And now it's an honor to welcome a great friend of this community, the 71st Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Eid Mubarak to you and to your families. It's, it's wonderful to join you. Aliyah, I'm tempted to say what she said, drop the microphone and leave, because <laughs> who wants to follow this uh, extraordinary uh, woman? Um, congratulations on the acceptance to Northeastern. Congratulations on your decision to dedicate what are manifestly tremendous talents to the public health field. We need you. They need you. The world needs you. We're so grateful to have you here with us now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and to my friend and colleague, our remarkable ambassador at large for international religious freedom. Um, he's been a remarkable force.
the United States around the world. <laughs> opening doors, opening minds, opening hearts, and making a huge difference. And it's always great to be with you, my friend. To all of our distinguished guests, uh, members of religious communities, civil society, the diplomatic community, thank you for joining us this afternoon, and welcome to Blair House, a, an absolutely wonderful setting. Um, Blair House, which is, I think as most of you know, the President's guest house, has played host to countless dignitaries over the past 80 years, including more than 100 heads of state from predominantly Muslim countries. Uh, now, we are thrilled to be opening its doors, actually quite literally opening its doors, uh, to community leaders for the first Eid reception hosted here by someone in my position. Um, so as you all know better than anyone, Eid is a time of spiritual renewal, an opportunity to reflect on a month of fasting and prayer, and to recommit, recommit to values at the heart of Islam, compassion, empathy, service, charity, gratitude, generosity. Our nation is strengthened by the contributions of hundreds of Muslim Americans across our government, including at the State Department. We know, I know, profoundly that our diversity it's a cliche, but it is so profoundly true. Our diversity is our greatest strength in the world, and we're putting it to use to serve American interests and values. We are operating in an extraordinarily diverse world. If we were to leave our own diversity on the sidelines, we'd be shortchanging ourselves, shortchanging our foreign policy, shortchanging the country. We're determined not to do that. As we look around the world, we see examples of Muslims living out the values that we're celebrating here today showing compassion for the vulnerable, showing a commitment to justice, showing a commitment to the pursuit of peace. Uh, when a devastating earthquake hit Turkey and Syria just a couple of months ago in February, governments stepped up to build shelters, to dispatch search and rescue teams. NGOs like the International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, the Islamic Relief USA, provided life-saving equipment, humanitarian assistance, food, water, clothing, medicine, we saw people coming together in an hour of profound need uh, for so many of our fellow human beings. When the Taliban enacted restrictive bans on higher education for women, governments from across the Muslim world spoke up to condemn the Taliban's decision, arguing that their actions were inhumane and contrary to Islamic beliefs. Scholars of Islamic law weighed in to condemn the Taliban's actions too, noting that the Quran gives the right to education, to women and men alike. And in Sudan, which has occupied our minds uh, and focus recently, Arab countries, as well as regional and international partners across Africa, are providing aid and helping secure an immediate end to the conflict. The United States is proud to support these efforts and others. And we will continue to work with our Muslim partners and allies to tackle the challenges of our time, the responsibilities that we all share. That includes fighting for the rights of many people around the world who simply cannot freely or safely practice their faiths. We're standing up for those who face persecution, for peacefully worshiping, those who are vilified for being part of a religious minority, those who face real threats to their safety, for choosing not to observe a faith at all. The team uh, at the Office of International Religious Freedom, led by Ambassador Hussein, uh, works with partner countries and civil society to advance religious freedom and drive progress on tackling pressing challenges, global health to climate change. And they're doing that, Shad is doing that around the world. For us, freedom of religion is a fundamental human right, one foundational to the creation of our country. And our government is committed to supporting the right of every person, every person to worship as they choose. We're equally committed to standing against discrimination and affirming every Muslim American's place as a full member of American society. The leaders in this room reflect the reality that Muslim Americans are a vital part of the fabric of this country. With us this afternoon, doctors, scientists, writers, poets, leaders tackling virtually every vital issue that our society has to tackle and confront. 
Mina Khalil and Fazal Mumtaz are two such leaders in this room. Both moved from Afghanistan to the United States in 2021. They quickly threw themselves into serving refugees in their new community here in Northern Virginia. They both work at the nonprofit Islamic Circle of North America Relief, where they're helping provide essential social services to new refugees, like health care, like transitional housing. They've both been generous about sharing their experiences with incoming refugees in panels and one-on-one -on -one conversations because they know that's one of the best ways to help others. Now, if Mina and Fazal are here, there you are. <laughs> Simply put, you reflect so much of the spirit of Eid, the desire to serve, compassion for the newcomer, a commitment to building a community. And you are, as we would say, paying it forward in a very profound way. But each of you here tonight embodies these values. You embody them with your words. You embody them with your work. The United States, the world, is immeasurably better off because of it. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight, and everybody, Eid Mubarak to everyone. Thank you.